Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're gonna we're about to start. Let's give like uh, four more minutes so to allow some more people to join us. Uh, so let's say we're gonna start like in uh, four minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to our 3PL 2019 Trends uh, webinar. This is a series of webinars that we're doing about this uh, industry. Uh, so there's going to be a next one, which I, at the end I will invite you to. Uh, the idea today is that we cover um, so basically, what is the state of the industry, the trends for 2019 and the next five years? And most important, to give you actionable um, features and options for you to implement right now and in the next five years in your operation uh, that can definitely make a, an impact on the services that you provide to your uh, customers. So let's start really quick here, uh, showing a little bit what is the uh, state of the industry. There's two things, two type of changes that uh, usually change the state of, uh, of industries. Most industries, but in this specific case, this industry, which are the technology trends and the social and business trends. On the first one, we have something that we hear a lot. Uh, not all of us know what it is, or some of us, we have an idea, uh, you know, a high level idea, which is uh, IoT or Internet of Things. Um, Cloud logistics, very trendy uh, these days. Low cost sensor solutions, even when it says low cost, still sensors are um, far away in the map of the uh, of the feasible uh, feature that you can implement, I would say, uh, re in reality in a warehouse. And then uh, last, the automation in the warehouse was something that we do think is something that you can implement right away. On the social side, we have the omnichannel logistics. So your customers are selling across 
different platforms across different uh, online stores and you know we, they need to see inventory uh, updated across those uh, channels they need to see orders updated across the channels we have fresh chain we've seen an increase of uh, players uh, uh, getting into the um, perishables or fresh chain um, scene um, namely amazon buying whole foods you know walmart now providing uh providing services also of, of, of delivers of food that you can buy from them and they deliver to you or do you pick it up sustainability something that we need to uh, obviously work on here in the states uh, europe is very advanced in this area here um, but again it's something that in the united states we're kind of still lagging and and we need to implement more of that in our in our uh, facilities warehouses and, and offices and last and but very important very very important customer uh centric uh, we have highlighted the ones that we think uh, will have an impact in the next five years, but we're going to focus on the one that we can realistically and actionable uh, implement uh, right now and throughout the next uh, five years. Um, what, what media change we're seeing in the market or market news we can share with you right now that will affect uh, the industry right now? Well, basically, uh, big players in uh, in in the transportation industry that were not before uh, providing services in the distribution or the 3PL industry now they're jumping in, um, namely uh, Marsk and CMA. Uh, CMA uh, agreed to purchase outstanding shares of global 3PL logistics. Also, Marsk is uh, either by acquisition or or by implementing technology to do so and services that will they'll come into the uh, 3PL industry. Um, of course, they want, to they want to leverage their size by delivering services across more parts of the supply chain. And uh, they want to, of course, claim more of the revenue and profits that, uh, that the industry uh, offers uh, nowadays. And uh, you'll see numbers and why they're jumping into this, uh, into this scene right now. Um, just so you have an idea, uh, let's put some perspective in the market uh, in numbers. Uh, and this is why, you know, players that were before in other areas like transportation exclusively now are jumping into the distribution scene. 1.1 uh, billion 3PL industry growth by 2024. Um, I'm just going to name a few because you have it on the screen. The, the uh, Internet of Things represents a 1.9 trillion opportunity in logistics. Um, nowadays, 50% of logistic providers use cloud-based services. Some of the things that those numbers are, are the, the tendencies that they keep growing. So either you start preparing for that right now or you're going to be behind uh, soon. OK, so we need to map that growth that you need to take in 2019. Uh, the main goal of this webinar is uh, for you to get the basic idea of how to prepare for these changes. Uh, things to take away from this presentation as well will be understanding what what changes affect your business and your client needs. Uh, so you can work and control those changes as opposed of, you know, of course, letting the change control you. So if you see something in this presentation that um, they might take advantage of, well, uh, we encourage you to you take action right now uh, or, you know, or you're going to be uh, the year. The next five years are going to come fast upon you and you will be left uh, behind. Um, now, one of the things that we think is crucial is being customer centric. The um, the lines between the business to consumer and business to business uh, services uh, are being blurred are, are now being blurred. So the end consumer has more power than ever. Uh, they are driving the change. They are buying from their phone, from our phones. We all do it. Uh, we want uh, immediate uh, satisfaction of recognition of our orders. We want immediate delivery or as soon as possible. We want to know what happened with the order. We want to know where is the order at the, at the moment or when we should expect that order. So you know, the end customer is the one driving that change. And the numbers that we are that we showed before, I think they show about that. So you need to make room in your infrastructure for these services uh, to uh, take place as part of the, the offering of, to your clients. OK, so you have to make it easy for them to access these things. So transparency, so the customer needs to know what's happening with orders. Affordability, you know, it needs to be um, affordable to access the services in this case for you. 
it has to be convenient and the speed of delivery, which translates at the end in that seamless customer experience. Uh, so, but in, in, in reality, what it means to you is that you need to maintain or prepare uh, with an integrated platform that offers an end-to-end -end visibility. Um, so online customer portals for B2B, e-commerce channel and platforms that, uh, that uh, maintain uh, inventory and transfer orders uh, seamlessly online to your backend or to your, um, or to your distribution center, uh, controlling your costs uh, by not outsourcing, but providing the services uh, yourself um, so there are features like last mile logistics, uh, the, the customer tracking portals, uh, customer uh, up tracking applications that you can provide to your customers. And these are the things that you need to keep your focus on uh, in the next uh, five years. Now, the other thing that is, of course, and absolutely driving the change is the whole e e-commerce e as a whole. And we will mention in the omni-channel. So now you're Customers are selling across a lot of platforms. Not only uh, before there were people only selling on Amazon. Now they sell on Amazon. They sell. They have a, their own store in Shopify. They also sell on eBay, and they want you to provide updates of the inventory of the levels of inventory across those platforms and channels. Uh, so you need to be able to manage that inventory uh, in real time effectively, so their end customers, their customers can purchase uh, and have the service right away like they want it. So the demand right now is anytime, anywhere from any device. So we, you need to be ready to um, be able to process orders as quick as possible and provide that visibility that the end customer needs, again, as and on the e-commerce uh, side. Now, uh, what does this mean for you? And you see that the trend that we're doing here, we, t we give you that trend and then we give you what you need to do or what you need to focus on. Uh, basically, um, you need to connect wholesalers and 3PLs and seamless trans trans transactions. So uh, if, if wholesalers and 3PL share platforms, well, the orders can flow uh, seamlessly, automatically, without complicated uh, integrations. Uh, your customers can be uh, updated and uh, the orders, the status of the orders can be updated via automatic emails, dedicated portal portals. You will need integrations with the main parcel carriers namely FedEx, UPS, USPS. If you do your own, um, if you don't do your own delivery, you have your own fleet, let's say, or you can provide, you know, your, your fleet, you will have to provide your own uh, last mile logistics and be ready to uh, compete with the, uh, with the main parcel carriers like FedEx, UPS, USPS, which they can provide pictures, they can provide the signature when they deliver. And uh, those are the things that we're mentioning that you can, um, come up with or prepare for in the next five years, but realistically implement without breaking your bank and also in a short uh, period of, of time. Um, the Internet of Things, uh, this is something that we, again, we hear a lot. Uh, we have an idea what it is. Uh, so basically is what we before were physical and mechanical objects uh, in, 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 our, in our lives. Now they are connected via uh, via a network and then you can trigger them, you can uh, receive alerts, uh, you can interconnect them. So that is crossing to the uh, logistics, that is crossing to the warehouse. So imagine right now your ring doorbell, right? Or your Nest term thermostat. Well, now in the warehouse, you can also trigger uh, certain devices that were before purely mechanical, physical, like a scale, or you can inject pictures right away to your uh, ERP uh, from your from your smartphone. So so that's, those are the things that you need to think about and get ready for and can make an impact right away, like we were saying. Um, what does this mean for you? So the trend is IoT, but to you it means that you need to implement these devices right away. You need to bring, uh, this could bring accuracy, speed, transparency to your process. Uh, we, um, you need to start adding features that uh, allow you to take the dimensions and the weight, for example, the products you're receiving, the products you are outbounding in less time, uh, avoiding less errors. So if you are delivering locally, or if you are even uh, maybe exporting the, 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 the orders, you need to also control that. If you move cars 
and you need to attach uh, to take the VIN numbers, attach pictures. So all those things that take that are low, very time consuming on the uh, on our day-to-day -day operations, you need to be ready to uh, automate it and uh, also um, you know be be uh, uh, update your customers and what's happening with that. So. Um, for example, if you need to, if your customers are sourcing overseas and you need to manage the POs, receive those POs via EDI, and then you need to let them know that the cargo uh, is already in the warehouse, so you can start. They can start fulfilling orders for your customers. Allocate doing automatic allocation in the warehouse, uh, smart pack and picking, automatic put away. You know, you name some a suite of features that you know that. Um, will make your whole distribution operation and warehouse and inventory management more automated so you can keep up with what is coming uh, in the next uh, five years. Uh, in that sense, we want to introduce you to our ecosystem. Uh, we design our products on innovative technologies, so we have um, what we call our, um, our, our core platform, uh, and then uh, all we design also applications and and enablers that you know create an ecosystem that allows you to interact with your environment and adapt as soon as possible. So there's going to be you will see that we have features that will allow you to uh, be customer centric. And uh, those pictures, for example, those uh, <laughs> those features, I'm sorry, uh, will allow you to provide that transparency, affordability, and convenience that your customer need. Um, you will see now that we have. Uh, solutions that allow, for example, the uh, connectivity with the online stores. So we have a platform that is called Logistical. Logistical basically uh, consolidate orders from multiple uh, channels and platforms, so the omni-channel that we were discussing before, and connected to your um, back end, the back end or the Magaya uh, core system so you can fulfill the orders quickly, so you can update this, the, the state of those orders back to the channel of the, of the customer, and at the same time that channel updates the final uh, customer, it uh, updates the inventory levels, it transmits the tracking numbers that either if you if you use uh, a main parcel of FedEx, UPS, USPS, or if you use your own uh, delivery uh, system, well, all that is transmitted back up to the uh, to the online store of your customer, where he is selling his products to their customers. Um, if you are doing more like a B2B or or, or a wholesaler uh, operation, and we can use our live track. So where your customer can see in an inventory you're holding for them in real time, they can actually uh, um, send you online orders so they can get the orders that they get from their customers and pass it to you so you can fulfill, fulfill them automatically. They can upload those orders uh, in a file so they don't do it one by one. And this is this are, like we said before, actionable and, and immediate solutions that you can implement right now. Uh, or in the next uh, five years, which won't break your bank and also will put you at the uh, at the top of the competition. Now, if you are doing your own last mile, last, uh, mile logistics, uh, we have our applications called Final Mile. Remember when I said that uh, you might need to compete uh, with the uh, big parcel uh, carriers uh, like FedEx, UPS, if you have your own fleet? Well, our application, with a, with a mobile application for your drivers, uh, it does the same functionality. So they can provide uh, optimal route in the in the in the phone. It provides uh, collection signatures of the uh, of the customer when they deliver, pictures when you deliver, all that transmitted back to your uh, to your ERP or to your core system, to your Magaya core system. If you use Magaya, of course, you have to use Magaya for this, of course, but you will be able to um, implement your own delivery system, which will cut on cost for you, so you don't have to pay a third party to do it. And um, absolutely, of course, then we'll um, collect the uh, the revenue on that uh, because it's all in-house, okay? So uh, we also so going to see features uh, for the e-commerce, uh, the omni-channel, the inventory management, and visibility fulfillment. Uh, it means that our our core solution is packed with functionalities 
that will allow you to manage uh, the whole process from the order when it comes in, uh, the allocation of the order, the fulfill of that order, the manage of the warehouse, etc. So um, we have, uh, in this sense, uh, again, we have logistical because logistical, you know, is the one that passed the orders. Uh, we have um, our live track and then we have uh, our core features we're going to talk about a little bit right now. So uh, why we mention again logistical and live track because they live in these two, I mean, it provides the, the duplicity of functionalities, you know, uh, duplicity for the e-commerce and also uh, for the um, the internet, um, the the visibility uh, for the customer. Now, in our um, core features, you will see that we have um, a suite of, of functionalities that will allow you to uh, run your operation in one single platform without you having to, you know, get two or three systems out there. So everything, our our, our core platform is packed with functionalities that will allow you to manage your fulfillment or 3PL operation from PO management. So if, again, we mentioned that before, let's say your customer is sourcing his products uh, overseas or locally, but you need to have that advanced notification what is coming where you could receive that PO uh, via EDI, specific integration into your core platform. Then you will be able to receive your products based on that PO, so any discrepancies will be reflected. I mean, you were expecting a certain amount of pieces and then you only received another other amount. Those discrepancies will be controlled. The, the, we will minimize the amount of data entry they will have because since you already have the data, the information, so the, the data entry is minimized at, 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 at almost zero. Um, you will have also then uh, the ability to manage your warehouse, so you will have uh, locations, you will have uh, warehouse, uh, multiple, multiple warehouses, you're going to have um, uh, replenishment, you're going to have uh, a reordering points, so there's a series of, of, of features that our system comes back with that will allow you to manage that operation. For example, if you're doing purchables, if you're doing uh, purchases, we have first expire and first out. If you are doing, if you need to control lot numbers, you need, if you're doing electronics, we have serial numbers. We have then uh, integrated accounting. Um, so you don't have to actually go out of the system to do your receivables, to, to collect your money, to, to print your check, to, uh, to pay your, your vendors. You can actually have everything in one single stop shop. The source order management and fulfillment, of course, will allocation automatic and manual allocation of orders. Uh, this uh, functionality is the one that uh, runs all the um, the logical procedures on how to allocate our products. Is this should be first in, first out, first expiring, first out. If the product is uh, uh, it has a um, um, it has an alternative product if you are in back order if you if there's back order see those the sales order management run that all that logic and functionality of course inventory control uh reordering points replenishment locations integration with the main carriers we said before if you have your own fleet you can use our last mile logistics but if you outsource the delivery with fedex ups or usps we have a native integration in the same core system so you can print the labels you're going to get your master tracking numbers right away those are the ones that are pushed up to logistical and those are the ones that are automatically sent to uh all the the stores and uh there's so much more here our customer management uh you got you have pickup and delivery so we have a full suite of features in our core system that will for sure complete and satisfy your operation right now and you don't have to um let's say uh break your bank like i said before and you can implement it right away or at least in the next five years of course in the next five years we're going to have the more things here so we're going to have to we're going to keep doing webinars for this now uh still we have here um in the internet of things side uh, what we were saying before, the ability to send, receive, and process store information, event-driven logistic processes, and use the data from connected objects. So basically provides whatever you need to uh, automate your process in order to uh, react faster, deliver faster, and keep uh, a seamless customer experience. Two things we have uh, right off the bat and that you can be used is our uh, binder. Binder is our application that allows to 
uh, take pictures uh, immediately and inject it in your system. So, namely, that you need to open a box for uh, some for to see a product that's inside, take a picture. If it's a business to business, and and there's a wholesaler that you're holding the product, and you need to uh, take the picture when you receive, you need the picture when you're loading the cargo. At any time that you take the picture, your employees can use your phone and inject the picture right away. These pictures are immediately attached to the system, injected in the system, and also visible by the customer in the portals, right? So this is one of the things that we say that you need to have a platform when across a platform, you uh, again, uh, manage to have visibility and it has to be also affordable for you to provide it to your customers. Uh, Dimensioner, uh, last but not least, Dimensioner is a, a key uh, game changer. Dimensioner actually basically takes uh, dimensions, uh, has sensors that take dimensions, weight, and also take pictures in um, in uh, less than 11 seconds. So usually an employee takes, uh, you know, let's say they need to deem and weight and take pictures of a pallet, uh, say between four and six uh, minutes. We can do it in 11 seconds. And then that's something that, like we said before, uh, will be, uh, like scale will be something that's mechanical and physical, and now you can trigger it through your network. So you don't even have to be by the scale. You just have to have the product in the scale, but you can trigger from wherever you are because it works uh, in your network. Uh, so these are the things that uh, we think you can uh, implement uh, right away. Uh, again, uh, we are we are at your disp you know are ready to uh, answer your questions. We want to invite you to our uh, next uh, webinar of this series for the 3PL. And of course, we want to want to open now for you. If you have any questions, I have my colleague here that will be taking the questions and, and passing it to me. Okay, so you can ask uh, some of the questions. Raise your hand. I believe you can do that. That uh, from the screen that you see in there, you can raise uh, your hands. Okay, perfect. I'm going to answer some of the questions now. Let me see. Okay, I have a question here. What is the difference between logistical and live track? Okay, very simple. Basically, logistical is um, a middleware, right, between the online stores and uh, the online platform. So, uh, say you're selling, your customer is selling Amazon, Shopify, eBay. So, it could be an, an online store or a platform. And then, uh, logistical consolidate the orders that are coming from those platforms and pass it to the uh, the core system to the back end in Magai and they receive the orders. Now, live track um, it's uh, it does not connect to the online stores. So live track provide a real time visibility of operations that you're doing in that back end, but does not connect to the stores. So to put it this way, uh, logistical will be the live track of the your the, your customers that are selling online. So if the customers that you have that are selling online uh, need to um, need to uh, see what's the status of this order, they can use logistical. Whereas, let's say, customers that, that don't sell online, they have their own, uh, their, own, um, their own system where they receive the orders and pass it to you, they can use LightTrack. And also, LightTrack provides visibility for other functionalities and other type of industries that we have. But that will be the main uh, difference that I say. Uh, let's go to the next question here. Uh, let me see. The dimensioner has a binder or the binder is totally separate thing? Good question. Uh, it's, yes, it's using a cell phone. The dimensioner take pictures using IP cameras and also from the sensors. So the dimensioners take pictures that we include whenever we scan, but the binder is an application in the phone that uh, actually uh, uh, you can uh, use separately. So you don't have to have a dimensioner to take pictures with binder and you can use a dimensioner without taking pictures uh, without using binder as well. Now, the problem is that the dimensioner is a machine that sits, uh, you know, uh, in a place in a warehouse, you cannot move it to take the picture. So what happens when you need mobility? So you need to have something in your phone that you can go move around the warehouse and take those pictures. Thank you, Luisa, for those questions. You are very active. Um, David, uh, Hoffin, uh, how, do I get, how do we get set up as a preferred broker to provide this customer? thousands of solutions options daily david i say that uh, we're going to provide you with our uh we're going to send you uh we're going to send you an email uh, to all the attendees so we with our information so we can discuss that later on 
Binder app on cell phone is connected with Magaya. Absolutely, it is connected with Magaya, Luisa. Uh, thank you, Luisa, for your questions. Any more questions that we have right now? Okay, we have like uh, two more minutes. If anyone else wants to uh, bring something, ask another question, we're here to answer those questions. Again, we just give you this webinar was designed to give you like uh, the trends for the on the industry. And uh, yes, absolutely, Luisa, you can contact me. You absolutely, you can send me an email. We're gonna provide, we're gonna send an email right there. Is my email is in the screen. And but you're also gonna receive a thank you email after the webinar where you're gonna have my contact information. Um, what I was saying is that the webinar was designed for you to get you know high level idea of what is coming on the 3PL industry trends for 2019 and the next five years. There's other functionalities that we can discuss depending on your specific operation. So feel free to reach out to us and uh, and we will, of course, uh, be gladly working with your, with your organization. David, okay, right, thank you, sir. Perfect. Thank you so much for your participation. Have a nice and wonderful afternoon, everyone.